Welcome to the Sands of Time run. This is a 2400 plus coin run. It is my best run so far. I know it's not the highest score possible, but I wanted to take you guys through it because it is a pretty good run where I get all chests, all coin piles, and all the sand. Um, it is a bit laggy in the beginning, and also my movement might make some of you cringe because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but here we are. So I always go with in the specific order of diamond key path, diamond chest path, obsidian key, and then obsidian chest path. Because this is about, this is just one circle around the map, and the diamond paths also have more sand. So it's good to go to those first. So this path specifically where I only get some of the sand and then I press the secret pressure plate. This was taken from Melissa's video, which I'll link down below. Melissa did an amazing 2500 plus coin run, plus a video explaining her run and all the se secret tips and tricks. And I learned a lot from that, so go check it out. But my path was pretty similar to her path anyways from before I watched her video. So I've kind of stuck to that. So when you're here, always go to the sand room first and drop down instead of going to the other direction because this door over here will take you part of the way to the diamond key anyways. So this route is the most efficient. And yeah, you just have to climb up to get the diamond key. It's pretty simple. And then from over here, you're gonna wanna drop down straight away and hit this button to pick up the sand here. And after this section, you'll go straight back into the one with the nine pillars and collect everything from that. I just saw that I missed the coins there. I could have gotten a 2500 coin run. Uh oh. <laughs> it's alright though. I'm taking it easy. So over here, you can actually miss those coins on this pillar because you're gonna go to have to go back down there and grab the coins to hop over to the next sand pillar anyways. And then you go down here and you just do the simple parkour. It's pretty simple. But yeah, Melissa's video really goes through a lot of her techniques and stuff in detail, so definitely go check her out. Her run is better than mine. Definitely if you want to see a player who's like really smooth, it's not me. So over here, you can see that just pick up the sand on the way, and then you can see that it's kind of this counterclockwise circle of all the things you need to get. And over here, I missed the key for a second, you go ahead and hop over this. You don't have to take check out the other side of the entrance door because you're going to be picking that sand up back up once you come back up the stairs anyways. If you see like some weird pauses, I was having a lot of lag issues during this run, but it worked out anyways. Now over here. You pick up this one sand and then you head down the hallway. There's two sand on the other side of that entrance hallway, but you can pick that up on the way back because it minimizes the amount of time you have running around that one area. Another thing here is jump up on a block to swim up higher in this section because the water swimming in bedrock is just really abysmally slow. So it's best that you just spend some time just to hop up on that block because it'll cut down the time overall. Another thing there is that zombies are actually not really worth going out of your way to kill. That zombie I killed there was mainly because it was in my way and if I let it stay there it probably would have taken me more time because it would be hitting me. But yeah. Zombies are only worth one coin while ranged mobs are worth two coins and evokers I believe are worth three coins. I'm not sure about other coin numbers because I haven't really analyzed that but this is also what Melissa said in her video. So later on, you'll see there's a section where I kind of do something a bit different just to get evoker kills. Another thing there is that you saw I killed that husk. Husks are actually worth two coins, but they're pretty easy to kill because they're basically zombies. And I don't know why they're worth more coins, they just are. So it's actually pretty worth it to kill husks in this section um, because they're a pretty easy kill. So if you have extra time, if you're at the stage where you have extra time and you know that you can complete the whole run, then you could take a little bit of extra time in here in this room to kill more husks and pillagers. But it's more worth it, I think, in the evoker room, so we'll get to that later. So here I'm running around to check out, see if there's more mobs, but there aren't, so I just head straight out. One of my biggest tips is to just always stay moving, because 
it's not really about like you don't really get more momentum in game or like less if you stop moving except you kind of do just a little bit but it's about like that mental momentum because if you just keep running then honestly it's easier to make decisions on the fly if you stop and try to think that can honestly kind of hurt you also this part you drop down for the coins just because it's really out of the way i don't think i should have gone and picked up those coins because i could have picked them up on the way to the obsidian vault but it didn't really hinder me that much so yeah honestly one of the big things about getting 2500 coins for me personally the only reason i haven't reached it is because i'm not good at conserving time with the sand like I'm bad at movement, which means I keep losing these minuscule amounts of time to just movement issues. And if I had more time, then I would have been able to kill more mobs. So yeah. In this section here, I always want to go and run and get the chest plate first. Because we're going to be entering a room with pretty dangerous mobs, so I think it's worth it. Now here's the evoker room. This part is a bit strange that I also picked up from Melissa. Go in there first and pick up the sand because then you can get more evoke spawns. Basically, if you're at that point where you've been able to get all sand runs, all coin runs, you can do this where you go in here first, so you can kill more evokers, pick up the sand, before you even get the key for the chest, so then later you can come back and then there could be more evokers for you to kill. Because evokers are the highest coin spawns. So yeah, now I head back out of there and go and get the keys again. One more thing I would like to mention is that honestly one of the really big killers would be lava. So always be careful rather than hasty when you're doing lava parkour. That's honestly like my biggest killer is the lava. So if there's like some ways you can do tricks that can get you to go faster, don't do those if you're not sure that you can do them. Especially in this section, if there's a mob on one of those side platforms and you run and go get it. Like here, I fell down, but it's pretty good because I already made it through the parkour, but yeah. If there's a mob on one of those side sections, like that evoker there, right here, there's two of them. If there's a zombie, it could very much knock you off. So be very careful in these lava sections. I'd usually suggest killing zombies that are on the side paths without standing on those side blocks because they can very, very much knock you off and knock you into the lava, which is very bad. But yeah. So now that we have the key, we go back into this room and you see there's skeletons and evokers, which give the two coins for skeletons and three coins for evokers. So it's good that because I already had that extra time that I came back in here to kill these extra mobs and get some extra coins. Now that I'm thinking about it, that one coin pile I missed could have very much <laughs> given this made this a 2500 coin run but uh it's okay we learn from our mistakes i'm probably gonna improve but yeah so now we're heading out of this section and i like to pick up the sand here on the way out instead of in because this it just kind of follows the path that you're running out anyways where the button is before so i know that makes sense but it doesn't mean okay now we're heading over to the obsidian vault and you could have seen that if I hadn't picked up the coins between in the main room earlier then that would have been fine. Now we're over here. We have this little jump to make to get to the sand. I mess this up a couple times. This is another point where I wasted time. I'm just not good at movement. Um, but it's a really simple jump honestly. I'm just really bad. <laughs> so yeah. Just want to pick that up and first we head down. There's a path that leads up. I always pick the one that goes down because you can pick up this sand in the middle and then you can go to this side, this corner where this sand is hidden, tucked away. The zombie here is really annoying so I did have to kill it, but yeah. Here's another thing. Spam clicking works in Bedrock PvP. I barely play Bedrock, but it's kind of a weird in between of 1.8 and old PvP where crits do exist, but I'm personally not good at crits. I think there's a few times in the video where you can see me try to do a crit and just fail. But the thing is, spam clicking does still work much better than it does in um, Java PV PvE. So if you're not good at landing those crits accurately, spam clicking, just spam click. Also that point there was really dangerous. Don't do that. I could have get got knocked off by the zombie. <laughs> Anyways, here's this other jump, which I struggled quite a bit on. 
which I think you can see in the video. Well, to be fair, I was kind of distracted by the pillars and evokers, but that jump's a little bit tricky. You kind of have to get as close to the end of that chain as possible, but not too close because if you look above, there is a stair block. So about there, as you can see, there's if you go even closer to the end of the chain, you, your jump will be blocked by the stair above your head because it's less, it's, I think it's like two and a half blocks tall only. So now we head into this room. I like to go down to this part first and get these things because then I can kind of go this way and then run back and then just do the entire path from the start. There's several ways you can do this room. None of them are that good because, you know, it's like a weird, you have to go down and back up again. But here I come up from that ladder and then I go to this path on the side to pick up the coins up here and then land on the hay, pick up the sand and then head up to the obsidian chest. And then I drop down here to pick up that. And I almost headed the wrong direction first. I usually go for this path over here, not the Neo path. Because this one has more sand and I kind of need that for the Neo because I'm not good at Neos. I'm, I keep an emphasizing this video how bad I am at movement. I'm not a parkour master. Um, I'm only good at parkour warrior because I've played it way too much. But... After that, I head down to the chest in the middle to get more sand. I always like making sure that I maximize the amount of time I have to attempt the Neo, because that's usually the part that gets me. And also, there's a lot of coins up at the Neo, so it's very important that you do get it. So I fail this jump like a couple times. As you can see here, this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> okay, we go again. <laughs> But don't worry about it, honestly. Just keep working at it, you can do it. Just make sure that you've mastered all the basics down, because once you've done that, you can make sure that you have enough time. And here's the other thing, I was cutting it close, I was considering ending this run here if I didn't get it, but there you go, one more jump and I got it. So just keep sticking to it, you know. And then running up here to get the very last bit of gold and sand. This part's pretty simple, it's pretty simple jumps. And then you can head out. Now this part is, okay, over here, the coins. I don't know the exact which ones have all the coins, as you can tell with my next one because I go into an empty door, but the two doors closest to the end, so the far end of the room, those two both have 20 coins behind them, and it's, see here, and then I believe it's, um, if you're facing into the room, if you're facing this direction, it's this door here. This one has a piece of sand. So that's another one to remember. So I can probably find a guide to where all the coins are, but I usually just go by the general guide that the two closest to the end have coins. And then there's that one door that has a piece of sand behind it. I did have a bit of extra time here, wanted to kill mobs, but there just weren't many around. So I couldn't really afford to go much deeper. So here's, this is basically like another tip for you if you've reached this stage, is to know how much time you really, really need. If you think you can stick in a place for a bit longer and get evokers, then do that. Anyways, that's my run. 2,460 coins, pretty much. And yeah, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.